I'm back with another video. The Canary Islands have been on my bucket list for a long time. This video is about the first of those islands that I visited, Tenerife. Here we go. This trip begins with a flight across the Atlantic. First stop, Madrid, Spain. Spent a rather uneventful night in Madrid. Next morning, got up, went back to the airport, boarded a flight to Tenerife in the Canary Islands. There are seven islands in the Canary Islands archipelago. They are about 62 miles off the west coast of the continent of Africa. Given their proximity to the continent of Africa, one might think that they're African islands. They are not. About 30 million years ago, volcanoes erupted in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Africa and continued to erupt for another 28 million years. The magma from those volcanoes formed the Canary Islands. We don't know much about the original inhabitants of the Canary Islands. We do know that they were African people. We also know that there are not many of them left. The Canary Islands are actually part of Spain. The first island on this trip, Tenerife. My wife and I landed in Tenerife rented a car, and, and this let me say, in driving around Tenerife, it does not take a master geologist to see that a long time ago, something really hot blew up and made all of this. The Canary Islands were formed very much in the same way as the islands of Hawaii, which also originate from volcanic activity. In this part of the Atlantic, the water is clear and the water is blue. Water is also a little chilly and a bit rough at times but it is beautiful to look at. There are several beaches in Tenerife. Most of them are man-made. They actually imported sand from the Sahara Desert to help create some of these beaches. That's hauling a lot of sand. Tenerife is the most populous of the seven Canary Islands, so much so that they have two airports, one north, one south. People come here for the beaches. People come here for the nightlife. There's a huge water park, I think the second largest water park in the world that is here in Tenerife. But none of those are the reasons that I showed up here. I came here for Parque Nacional del Tide. You can tell I've been working on that. Tide National Park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A UNESCO World Heritage Site is a place to a landmark with outstanding universal value to humanity. World Heritage Sites are chosen by the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, better known by its acronym, UNESCO. Ding, 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 ding. So now you know why I'm out here. I'm about to go up in these mountains and get my full nerd on, aka another one of my happy places. The main feature in Tide National Park is none other than Mount Tide. It is a dormant volcano. It's not extinct. It is dormant. It's just sleeping. It's going to wake up one day. Based on its elevation from the ocean floor, Mount Tide is the fourth largest volcano in the world. It is the most visited national park in Spain. And even with that, yes, you're going to see people, but it is not crowded. The landscape in Tide National Park is otherworldly. So much so that NASA sent the Perseverance rover to train on Mount Tide before its trip to Mars. Everywhere you look, everything you touch comes from volcanic activity. As I said before, Mount Tide is dormant. Although there is no lava flowing from Mount Tide, it still emits sulfur from its caldera. My lovely bride and I decided to take a hike. I had no idea that it would be this beautiful. I had to just stop and stare. I, could, I couldn't believe it. Moisture from the ocean blows across the island. That moist air hits the mountains. It rises it condenses, and then it forms these clouds. You can stand here and watch it all happen. It's hard to imagine that anything would grow in this landscape. However, there is this six foot shrub. It's actually a flowering plant. It's called red bugalus. You're gonna see them quite a bit when you're hiking around. They're everywhere. There's an observatory in T-Day National Park, which comes to one of the primary reasons why I wanted to come here. 
you may have heard me mention in previous videos that I enjoy observing the night sky. You may or may not know that the Canary Islands, specifically Tenerife, is one of the premier night sky destinations on the planet. Yes, I'm about to be in full nerd mode. It's not enough for me to come up and visit the observatory during the day. And I've got to come back up here and see these stars at night. Now, my wife is like, look, dude, I am not about that getting up at 3 a.m. in the morning, hiking up in the mountains, looking at the sky. But I know that's how you get down. So, hey, have a good time. Be careful. No climbing. For some reason, people in my family think that I'm out here climbing around on rocks in the middle of the night. I believe it's because they watched this movie a few years ago. It was this guy climbing around on the rocks in Utah and he got stuck and he had to cut his arm off to save his life. They think I'm out here doing this kind of thing. It is true that I have done a thing or two that may make one question whether or not I am of sound mind. However, I am not out here climbing around on stuff in the middle of the night by myself. Now, I do have a couple buddies that travel with me from time to time. And I have done some questionable things with they have ha and they have had to talk me down and, and say, Ken, that's not a good idea. So here's the truth. One of them been out here snitching. Now my family is out here trying to make me wear a crash helmet everywhere I go. But all that said, she says, hey, have a good time. Be careful. No climbing. See you in the morning. Because, you know, I'll tell her, look, I'm driving up here at night. I'm not driving back down at night, too. I'm going to go do one trip in the dark. So. I get up, 2 a.m., set the GPS, the road from where I'm staying to T-Day, takes uh, not quite an hour. I get to the mountain at about 3 a.m. During the day, I had scouted out a couple locations where I wanted to set up and try and capture the Milky Way. Of course, they weren't as easy to find in the dark, but I figured it out. Let me say this. I have been to several of the world's premier dark sky locations of the top 10 i think i have four more to go and if they are anything like this i may never come down i now know why astrophysicists have all of this equipment up here things that makes this a premier place one it's elevation two no light pollution three it's very dry there's no humidity which means the sky is much clearer no surprise to me I am the only one out there. There isn't another soul in sight. Some people might be freaked out by that kind of thing. I actually kind of enjoy that. I hiked around in the dark. I did not do any climbing for hours. I took shots from several different places. But mostly what I did is just sat and looked at the stars. This was everything that I hoped that it would be. What you see behind me is Mount Tide. It is sunrise in Tenerife. Uh, well, let me say this about coming up here at night. Bring a coat. It's cold. Please take a moment to click that like and subscribe button. and trying to keep up with that YouTube algorithm. I must say that I'm really glad I came here. I've got a chance to check off another one of my bucket list locations. But you know, there's something about my bucket list that I've started to notice. Every time I check one location off, I add two more. Canary Islands Part 1 is almost in the books. Got one more thing to do. Going to celebrate my anniversary with my lovely bride. As the sun sets on Tenerife, we're about to start Canary Islands Part 2. But before I go, I will leave you with these. Thank you for watching. Canary Islands Part 2 will be coming to you soon. Please tune in.